This is a CBS News Chicago special presentation. Hi, I'm Brad Edwards. Big breaking news we are following, and we thank you for following us on the stream here, CBS News Chicago. Let's go to video of the incident that happened in July. Here it is. Two cops are now charged with felonies regarding this incident. At the time, police said they saw four people wearing masks, loitering close to a business. One officer at the time said the group pulled a gun. One individual in that group pulled a gun, sparking an exchange of gunfire. After that exchange, both officers got out of their vehicle and apparently went after the shooter. Two people were wounded not the shooter, neither were either of the officers. Those officers today, though, have been charged, charged with Class X felonies, uh, could carry up to 30 years max in prison. Pretty jaw-dropping claims laid out by the state's attorney earlier in a press conference, Kim Fox. We will play that press conference in its entirety at the end of this conversation, but first we want to bring in our friend of the stream and our legal eagle, Irv Miller, to break it down for us. Irv, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is pretty seismic news. You just listened to the bond hearing for both of the officers. They turned themselves in last night. They were just at 26 and Cal in the courtroom. Case was laid out. Can you highlight it for me? Sure. You have uh, uh, a version of events that was presented to the judge by the prosecutor. You had a different version of the events um, related to the judge by each of the defense attorneys. And the judge decided at this time that uh, in order for the officers to get out of jail, which is where they're at right now, they each need to post $2,500. Uh, the bond was set at 25000 they, it requires a 10% uh, posting of a cash bail. She also ordered that they turn in uh, firearms, which they already have, and also that uh, they surrender their FOID cards. So basically at this point, uh, they may be able to get out of jail by posting money, but they're certainly not gonna be uh, paid police officers because if you can't have a weapon, a police officer doesn't get paid. And they've been stripped of their police powers in any event. Uh, from what we know of the officers, pretty unblemished, untainted records. Um, the event from the police narrative was that they came up upon a group of masked men. Uh, one young man drew a weapon. Uh, both officers then drew their weapons, started shooting. Uh, an innocent bystander was wounded and also another person was wounded, a person who was standing next to the, to the, to the first man who, who drew his weapon, which apparently uh, started this whole exchange of gunfire. Can you detail as much to your recollection uh, how the, the state's attorney's stories differs from, from what police first reported said happened? It's uh, all a question of who fired first. Uh, the state's attorney is saying that the police fired first. The defense attorneys are saying, hey, uh, we don't really know who fired first, but we do know that this juvenile who was standing with the person that got shot uh, was carrying a gun and had a gun, and the officers were in fear of their own safety. Uh, basically, it comes down to uh, this case is going to be a trial down the future. Uh, the problem is if the officers uh, get convicted, as you said earlier, there's a mandatory minimum sentence of six years on the bottom, up to 30 years in the Illinois Department of Corrections. Uh, but I have to tell you, they both have very good lawyers, and uh, there's no question in my mind this case will be tried at 26 in California. You won't be seeing a guilty plea uh, by these officers uh, based on what I heard today. Yeah, I know, and officers, I've talked with sources within the police department, um, displeased, to say the least, about the charges brought forth by the state's attorney's office. The claim by the officers, um, from what I know, what sources tell me, is that really it doesn't, doesn't matter who shot first, but that a gun was drawn and they were in imminent fear of their life. Uh, that's why they shot. Um, the state's attorney's version of events would almost say that the cops sitting in their cruiser willy-nilly pulled guns and started shooting on a, on a crowd. That just doesn't make sense, does it? Well, 
We don't know if it makes sense, and frankly, it's going to make sense at trial for one reason. Based on this bond hearing, based on the proffers, we know there are at least two videotapes, um, probably from you know store videotapes uh, or possibly pod video videotapes that capture basically this whole incident. Uh, neither officer was wearing a body cam. They were they were in civilian dress on their way to a training exercise. But um, the state's attorney acknowledged there's videotape. The defense attorney will say they saw the videotapes, and they came to different conclusions based on seeing the videotapes. Well, down the road, a judge or a jury is going to see these videotapes, and I suspect that uh, the, the issue will be solved as to what happened based upon that. And thankfully, in a case like this, there is videotapes, because you really don't want to have to rely on witness recollections or defendant statements or victim statements. They're not always true. But when you have videotape, it makes life easier for both the prosecutor and the defense attorneys. These are pretty serious charges. Um, I know Kim Fox says other officers have been charged before, but not not to our recollection and our due diligence uh, in, a, in a case like this. Uh, the wounded individuals have both recovered. Um, has uh, a sworn and working CPD officer faced class X felonies with up to a 30-year maximum, uh, let alone, I know, in talking with some officers. Um, there was almost some offense, not almost, there was some offense taken that these officers had turned themselves in last night, stay overnight in custody, waiting for the hearing to happen today. Um, Anything unusual about that? <clears throat> no. As a matter of fact, that's uh, if it didn't happen that way, it would have shown that these officers were being given special treatment. What happens is when somebody is arrested by uh, a police department here in Cook County, uh, the person has to be processed at the station, fingerprinted, photographed, and taken to 26 in California for a bond hearing the next day at noon. Um, these lawyers were smart. They told their clients, hey, it doesn't make sense to turn yourself in at noon. Come turn yourself in at night, less time that you have to sit in the police station before you're transported over to 26 in California. So this is exactly what would happen if anybody was arrested last night on any case for a felony. They would have uh, had to sit the night uh, in a police station and been brought over to 26 in California for bond during this morning. Yeah, and I guess it will be a question of, in a split-second decision, who drew first, right? Who drew the weapon? Because if indeed it's shown that the juvenile drew his weapon, um, is that not sufficient enough to make a claim that one thinks their life is threatened? Um, yes, and I, I think the uh, prosecutor's proper uh, acknowledged the fact that the, uh, the juvenile's uh, had a gun, was in his hand, and uh, the officer's uh, they, as they said it in a second or two, uh, the, the shootout that the OK Corral began. And, you know, uh, somebody really could have got killed in this, some, some bystander. Uh, somebody, the officers could have got killed. The juvenile could have got killed. This, this could have uh, been ultimate mayhem out there. And uh, as I said earlier, the judge and the jury are going to have to decipher this as to not whether or not it happened. It did happen. But whether or not these officers fired um, in a situation where they were justified to fire and not just uh, violating uh, uh, Illinois law. Uh, when you come away with major takeaways in this, and we know uh, the schism, uh, the fault line uh, between the state's attorney right now and the Chicago Police Department, one can only imagine that this will exacerbate that divide. You know, I, I agree with you for uh, a particular reason based upon my background as a former assistant state's attorney and former defense attorney. Uh, this case could have gone either way as far as uh, the charging decision. Uh, I haven't been privy to those videotapes, uh, so, but they are. So uh, I think we have to wait and to see uh, the evidence that comes out uh, based upon uh, also here what the officers originally told to the police and to the state's attorney's office and the COPA and make a decision one after we have all of that. Because right now you have a bond hearing where there were two conflicting versions of events and somebody has to resolve the dispute between uh, the two sides. And that will determine whether or not this case will be indicted by a grand jury, uh, whether or not it'll be a bench trial, a jury trial, 
conviction or an acquittal, and uh, all that's down the road. Oh, one final question, Irv, and this is deep in the weeds, but when the prosecution laid out their case, and again, the officers would say uh, the young man had his gun drawn, they felt their lives were in imminent danger when they fired. Does the Cook County State's attorney admit, or what is, is their contention when it comes to the gun? Do they admit that the gun was out and visible when the Chicago police officers started shooting? That is my understanding of the proffer. Um, you should be getting a copy, getting a copy of the written proffer uh, uh, with whoever your reporter is out at 26 and Cal. Uh, but my recollection of the proffer is that that was given to the judge verbally was that the uh, juvenile did display the weapon uh, prior to the time that the officer started firing. But that's just my recollection. Okay, but that will be a, a huge point here. Uh, Irv, we do appreciate you recalling this uh, masterful memory as usual. Uh, Irv Miller, our senior legal analyst at CBS2 Chicago, our chief legal eagle, sorting things out for Irv, uh, friend of the stream, we appreciate it today. Thank you for joining us.